everyone. This is JCK from Quantum Truths, JCK. It's been a while since I've done interviews and um, this interview in particular has come at a very serendipitous moment because in the last six weeks or so, I've been dabbling with homeopathy and in my own personal life, my daughter who has autism has had a complete breakthrough in her health, in her cognitive health. And after exploring homeopathy, I um, happened to be talking to a good friend of mine who's a homeopath in Ireland, and she said, you need to talk to my friend. You need to talk to my friend. She's got these amazing first aid kits and she's running courses and you need to talk to her. And I said, okay, introduce me. So all of these amazing synchronicities happened. And in the end, what ended up happening was I met the most beautiful person who lives in Australia, and that is Melissa Kupsch from Remedy Collective. And some of you already probably have seen her work. And uh, have you spoken to Dale Holmes on his show, Melissa? Yes, I did. <laughs> so, Melissa, I was absolutely impressed with you. I mean, First of all, we got to talk uh, personally and you got to do a session with me, which you don't really do anymore. You have uh, a group of homeopaths who work um, through you or who you recommend, but you've got these amazing websites set up and something that I, I mean, I personally have never seen this before um, in homeopathy, but you've created these wonderful kits. But firstly, let, you know, tell us about yourself, how you got into homeopathy what it is and why it is we need to be knowledgeable about Learned. this. Yeah. Sure. So how did I get into it? Well, I always wanted to get into natural medicine. I loved naturopathics. So I was two years into my degree of that, but my sister was chronically sick. So she used to get a UTI, which is like a urinary tract infection, and she would go to hospital and she would be in there for a week at least IV antibiotics, doctors testing everything because the infection would go not just from her urinary tract, but right up into her blood. And so she was sick and this would happen, you know, every, every couple of months she'd be in hospital. So it's like, she's getting all of that medical care. Our dad's a doctor. So where I say, I love natural medicine is like, my dad's a doctor, my mom's a hippie. And I was always going to be like right in the middle had never heard of homeopathy, never even heard of it. But I used to have this uh, lecturer at uni and he used to say to me, oh, you'd be a good homeopath, you know, you'd really love it. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I have never even heard of that, you know, system of medicine. There is no way, no way I'm doing a hex, you know, debt for that. So I always fobbed him off and I was like, oh, whatever, whatever. And uh, one day he said it to me while my sister was in hospital for like the, what, 20th time. And I was like, right, that's it. If you can cure my sister's chronic condition, I'll change my degree next week. And he's like, yep, when can she meet me? So we met him in a coffee shop um, just in Gloria Jeans, and he's just going through her whole health history, like better than any doctor we've ever been to. And it's like, you know, what was it like when you were born? Did you get tonsillitis? Did you get ear infections? What foods do you crave as an adult? Tell me the most traumatic thing you've ever been through all of this sort of stuff, asking really about like her personality. So not just the physicals, he was building like a whole map of my sister. And he gets to the end and he sort of like asked her, um, you know, do you have much like anger? And she's like, oh, no. And then he's like, oh, what about it if you're in the car and someone cuts you off? And she's like, oh, yeah, totally psycho. He's like, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who actually have suppressed anger. Like as women, we don't feel that we can express it appropriately. And so it comes out in these random, you know, seemingly harmless ways, but it, it is indicative that you have probably quite a lot of suppressed anger. And as he's sort of asking her about this and he's asking her about, uh, because when she would have sex, that's when the UTI would be triggered. And he's sort of poking around in this sort of sphere, the mental and emotional sphere of that. And then my sister's just bawling and she's crying and he's like, okay, I know what remedy you're going to need. And so he gives us this little amber bottle of drops and he just says, take this, you know, twice a day, two drops under the tongue and let me know how you're going in six weeks. And uh, by this time she had such, um, because of all of the antibiotics she'd done. And at this stage, 
the doctors had told her, you need to take antibiotics every day for the rest of your life. That was honestly what the head of the Brisbane hospital said to her. And I mean, she had tried everything, every naturopathic approach, every like Chinese medicine, acupuncture, she'd quit her job. She'd done the grounding. She was trying so hard. And in the end, it was these freaking little drops. And when she started taking that, um, her bladder incontinence stopped. She started having all these discharges coming out. A lot of her anger started to actually come up to the surface. And he said, you know, write it out, just um, type an email and delete it. Just get this anger up out of your body. And Anyway, so the changes were almost immediate and I was like, what the hell has just happened? And, um, yeah, so I then said, well, I'm going to come and see you as a patient myself because I really don't want to change my degree unless I'm totally certain. But when I did that and my own experience with homeopathy, just unbelievable. And, you know, really at the core of it when we're saying what is homeopathy for every person who hasn't got a clue what it is, Hippocrates was the father of medicine, right? So he says in 500 BC, you can either cure by the law of opposites or the law of similars. So Western medicine has gone with the law of opposites and they, you know, it's like your body's got a fever, shut that off, opposite. They're just going to oppose your body and suppress those symptoms at every turn. The law of similars is like, right, okay, your body's trying to run a fever. I'm going to give you the tiniest little nano dose of an energetic stimulation that's going to help you run a fever. Now, what happens when you cure with the law of similars is that your body pushes itself back into its own divine balance. So it's really a sympathetic, you know, trying to light up and heal your body from within. So It is an energetic system of medicine. It is a frequency that you ingest and it just floods the cells of the body and it lights up that divine intelligence within the body. And this is where you see the body starts to heal itself. It just needs that divine energy, that spark to get it going. And with homeopathy, you're really looking at a person as a spirit, mentally, emotionally, and physically. They are completely correlated. My sister's suppressed anger and issues in the sexual sphere were completely playing out. Now, if people realize that there are patterns of disease for all things, you know, people think that they are a rarity, you know, but I get tonsillitis recurring and I've had glandular fever and now I've got chronic fatigue and they think it's just them. And if they saw the cases that we take, you all fit into a pattern because your human organism is trying to express itself and it speaks in symptoms. That's incredible. I've, you know, I've experienced this now myself and we had a session, a private session, you and I, and that was two hours of me giving you my medical history I sound very similar to your sister because I I had the tonsillitis I had the urinary tract infections growing up I probably had repressed anger so it it, it's when she's you're talking about her I'm going yeah well that's a similar patterning to us uh to myself and I also as we were going through our session uh noticing patterns and noticing these um reoccurring themes and um, my daughter as well. So at this moment, I just wanted to bring this up, Melissa, too. So we're seeing a, a homeopath local to us. Um, my daughter, within two doses of a homeopathic remedy to detox the vaccine, um, after eight years, so she's got autism, so after eight years of incontinence, complete incontinence, um, you know, with urine and fecal incontinence um, overnight, just overnight, like that, by the second dose, completely no bedwetting, no wetting her nappies, no wearing nappies, wearing normal undies. This is like a game changer. This is why I knew I knew that homeopathics worked, but didn't realize how incredibly um, powerful it is. I always thought it was an adjunct to other sort of healing methods that it was kind of a wishy-washy thing. I didn't know it was so specific. I didn't know that it could be so miraculous. It's like alchemy. I told you this before. And the other thing I love about it, Melissa, is that it gives um, a sovereignty to the person because they start to comprehend that it's not hit or miss. It's actually something that can truly, truly heal the person on a holistic level. Can you tell us, Melissa, about 
just touch on the the history of homeopathics. Why isn't it known? Why didn't they use this during the C word? Why didn't they use this as as a remedy for for conditions you know that, that we have now that it seemed to be uh, being spread all across the world? So the history is so fascinating with homeopathy. When you look back only 100 years ago, we had over 100 homeopathic hospitals across the US alone. So we are talking massive buildings, massive hospitals with multiple wards on them. And all they did there was give out homeopathic medicine. These are the finest minds of the day. Absolutely brilliant. So when we look at the time, JD Rockefeller, he was bringing in petrochemical drugs. Most people know the whole scenario. What they don't know is that when he donated to universities, now these universities of the day used to fund homeopathic medicine. They used to teach it at really prestigious universities, you know, Oxford, these elite universities. And most of the homeopaths back then were also medical doctors. They were medical doctors who converted. The founder of homeopathy is also a medical doctor and absolutely brilliant mind. So here you have Rockefeller saying, I will only donate my millions to this university if you completely halt any teaching of homeopathic medicine. So very quickly you're able to stomp out, um, you know, a whole system of medicine and get it relatively unknown. You know, I would say people in the Western world largely do not know what it is. We know what naturopathics is. We know what acupuncture is. And yet homeopathy, which in my opinion is the like the most elite, it is the most powerful, um, a lot of people just don't know it. And um, in regards to that, J.D. Rockefeller, he had three homeopaths of his own that looked after just his own family. So while he does that, while the Queen of England has always famously had her own homeopathic physicians for her family, she says she wouldn't travel anywhere without homeopathic remedies. And so here are these like people right at the top who can afford any sort of medicine they want. They choose homeopathy and yet the average person has no idea even what it is. And so when people do stumble on it, like once I finally stumbled on it and I started reading all of these texts and I was like, oh my gosh, it just felt like the holy grail, to be honest. And I think to be honest, Samuel Hahnemann, the doctor who founded homeopathy, he would have felt the same. So back in the day, he's working in a library, um, the largest esoteric text collection in the West, in the world. Uh, and so this is in Romania. He's working for Baron von Bruckenfell and he's translating texts. So he knows, you know, eight different languages and he is so smart. He's translating medical texts on alchemy and all of the esoteric works of back in the day. So even, um, you know, Isaac Newton, People know him for all of his work on gravity and all of those laws that we, you know, know, and yet his work on alchemy, people don't know anything about it. And yet Samuel Hahnemann was privy to all of this inside knowledge. And so when he's realised, wait a minute, a tiny, tiny diluted potent eye. So they energize a natural substance from nature. So this is how we make our homeopathics. You can make it from a plant, a mineral, or a like tissue product. So in that you're diluting it, you're succussing it, you are making it energetically, very vibrationally active and potent. Now the human body on the most fundamental level, we are made of energy and we know this breakdown to subatomic particles. Ultimately you get quarks, photons. We are just buzzing energy. And so it really does make sense that when you stimulate us with energy, you see a change in symptoms real freaking quick quicker, I would say, than even pharmaceutical drugs because it lights up your system almost immediately. And um, yeah, so like with your daughter, we've given the tiniest amount then of the vaccine that caused the injury. Now, when you re-expose the body to what was the original assault, her body can mount up a healing response. It recognizes what the original stressor was. Now her body's coming back with the energy to heal it. And we see this with all of the isopathic. So that's what we call in homeopathy when we're using, you know, a substance made from a vaccine. So the COVID vaccines have been very, very popular and it's re-stimulating the body with the energetic frequency of what caused it harm in the first place. And what you're seeing as a result of that is a purging. The women's menstrual cycles 
the amount of blood clots that they are passing in response to that, rashes that people have had all over their body start to clear up and it is that energetic exposure that stimulates that healing. Uh, I love this. This is uh, such a... Uh, a fascinating thing, and I'm I'm very. I have to thank actually uh, Fortune to Saint Germain for making me revisit homeopathy. So I don't know if you know this, uh, Melissa. There's um, so Crow Triple Seven, who's got a um, his uh, regular podcast, uh, was very interested in alchemy, and so he put it out to the public. If anyone out there studies alchemy, please contact me. And so the ancestor of Saint Germain who was the alchemist in Heinemann's time, uh, Heinemann's time. I think he actually worked with him and helped him with the alchemy and to, to kind of comprehend homeopathics, um, contacted Crow 777 and then, you know, started talking about homeopathy and how it's he, he's, a, he's a medically trained allopathic doctor. He became a doctor and, stud, and studied homeopathy. So this particular guy, so that is how all of the doctors were trained, weren't they? So uh, initially before 1930, before the Rockefellers said, oh, no, we'll go with the petrochemicals. So this is what is fascinating. So I have to thank coming across his stuff and then meeting you was just absolutely serendipity. So tell us about, do, do homo, homeopathics work on animals as well? Do they work on pets? Because we've got a lot of people out there that are watching that want to, for example, maybe they want to try stuff on themselves, but they don't necessarily have children. They have pets that are like their children. Will that work for them as well? Is that something that you see? Yeah, definitely. And so you treat in the same way that you treat humans. So say it's a first aid issue. Let's say your pet's just gone for a surgery and they're having a hard time healing, you're going to use your arnica, which we've known for so long heals humans. So you use the same. Mm -hmm. If your pets have arthritis, your rust tox will get rid of that inflammation. Um, if they're anxious, a lot of pets have anxiety and have issues from that. Um, we had a builder come to the house today and um, he was talking about something. He's like, oh, you're a homeopath. Oh, my mom, you know, my mom used that a lot. And he said, we use it on our racehorses because it keeps them so relaxed in the gate that when they are, you know, it raises, they take off so much better because they're not jittery. And so they put it in their troughs. Now, the energetics of it, it goes through all of the water. Water has that molecular mimicry. It absorbs the frequency. They're lapping it up. They walk into the gates more relaxed. Let's go. So pets, yep, you treat the same as humans. This is incredible. I, I want to thank you for um, sending me the kit. So we're, I'll show everyone your website and um, the kits that you've got. So I got this beautiful kit um, sent by Melissa's team and it's this beautiful, very substantial wooden box. Um, I did try and show a photograph of it um, yesterday on my Telegram chat and uh, I will be sharing that in the newsletter as well. And inside in this particular kit, I mean, this is just such a beautiful, brilliant idea. You, I mean, you must have been working as a homeopath and then just thinking, we need to get this out there. Is this is that how you came up with the idea to do the first aid kits? And it's been amazing. So, yes, things like tonsillitis, because what you've got is a lot of people who want to be holistic, but they're already a little bit sick or their kids are already like they need medicine. We're always going to need medicine. And so it's one thing to not like pharma and not trust pharma, but what are people going to use? And I'm finding what you've got now is people who've got pharma fear and then they reluctantly do have to resort to it. And then it's double whammy because not only are they using toxins, but they also feel awful about it, which gives the body even more oh, issues. From it. Yeah. And so it's like, but homeopathic medicine, oh, I mean, it has been around for eons. It is so, so effective. And then it's like the little um, Trojan horse, you know, I get them into the home because people share them on Instagram because they're so beautiful. People are like, oh my gosh, look at this. And people are like, what's that? I want one. So then they buy one. Then they're like, whoa, this is really working. And they're seeing all these different things. You know, it's like parents are using the thuya and their kids' warts are just falling off. And they're like, what is happening? Like the body is getting so much stronger in that. The immune system is getting stronger. And that's when people are realizing wait, it's not just for first aid. I can use this for my chronic deeper issues. And yeah. this is where 
you actually heal someone. So in first aid as parents, you know, you're not really going to treat your asthma and your eczema and your endometriosis, which is like a lot more chronic, or even for some people, their chronic anxiety or depression. It's rampant in the world today, right? Yeah. And when they see how it works in a first aid and then they're listening to me explain the way that the frequencies and because when you look at it, we are inheriting the frequencies of our ancestors. So what a lot of people are dealing with, it's inherited. Now, I'm not going to say it's genetics, it's energetics that you are receiving from both sides and they can be really dominant. So while I hear heaps of people, you know, on their channels and they're like, oh, it's all in your mind and it's all this, you know, just think positively. I'm like, well, actually there are babies being born and they're riddled with eczema because they are inheriting a vital force that is out of alignment and they need medicine to tap it back in. And so that's where, you know, and even the adults and I see so many adults and they have struggled with chronic depression or anxiety their whole life. And I mean, they have really tried to do the work, but it's like they're prone to addictions. They're trying to numb it out. And it's it's grief and trauma that's not theirs. And so it is harder to get into the depths of your cells and actually cleanse that out because it's like, I don't even know how the F that got there. This is like just inherited. And it's like a freight train, you know, and you really, the homeopathics, When people take it, you will have, like my sister had, like I had this emotional purge and it just comes up out of you. And it's like, oh my gosh, I did not even know that was there. And I think for me, that's the sweet spot of my work. I mean, first aid is cool, but when people completely heal their spirit and all of the wounds that they have accumulated throughout their lifetime, and you see them actually living free. They're not addicted. They don't have to run from anything. They don't have to please. They got nothing to hide. It is like, that's real freedom. I think homeopathy is the most powerful medicine for actually recalibrating the human spirit and allowing that. And hence why I would say it is the most suppressed medicine and why they don't talk about it. In fact, they outwardly really go for it. Um, But despite that, we're seeing a massive resurgence. Yeah, often like when you do look it up, it will come up with quackery or some kind of other keywords on the internet when you look up homeopathy you know as though it's an alleged science and it's this is how the mainstream media is showing it um so it's not contraindicative with any other medications you can use it with with every other system of of things is that correct And because it's the energetic field, you're on a different sphere. So to be like taking acupuncture whilst also taking the herbs. But what I do say to people is, you know, for example, a lot of my work has been in fertility. Uh, If you take the homeopathics, it's going to completely change your hormones within, you know, that first month. Your next cycle is going to be very different because that that energetic stimulation of the ovaries, it's really quick. Albert Einstein said what? Um all all it all starts in the field and then uh energy proceeds better so when you work on the energy then the matter forms in response to that so same goes with hormones neurotransmitters all that so whilst it's not contraindicated for example i would never give someone homeopathics while they're going into an ivf round because uh the homeopathics is so powerful the ivf doctors are going to be trying to like stop ovulation at a certain time your body if i'm stimulating it is going to be like nope i'm going to do what i'm made to do so it's the drugs. So that'd be one little thing, but in general, they are supportive. So if I'm working with someone who's on say antidepressants and what I would always say to them is let's recalibrate your whole field. Let's cleanse all of that trauma out, stay on the antidepressants at the same time until you feel so good as you want to wean it. And when you want to wean it, go very, very slowly so that your brain can take over that natural balance. But Overall, very, very safe. And because, you know, even with naturopathics, with herbs, with supplements, I'm pretty off the over-prescribing that people are getting these days. They've got a laundry list and it's too much. It overwhelms their body, overwhelms their liver. Homeopathy does no such thing. It is the energy to allow your cells to communicate. It's no toxic burden. It'll either resonate with your body and it'll produce a healing effect or it's pretty much going to do nothing because it'll find no resonance. Oh, that's so amazing. This to me sounds as though homeopathy is the 
key to everything that we've been talking about on my channel for the last few, few years because I've been talking about what we've learned during these last few years is that something is off in our realm. Something is really off and it's making us go away from the natural. It's going making us go away from the organic. It's going into, um, it's kind of flipping the organic or it's flipping the, the natural order of things. And it sounds like homeopathy is recentering you and allowing you to, your body to reclaim its sovereignty in how it heals itself. We've got our bodies are self cleaning ovens. Our bodies, if you step out of the way, if you allow it the right conditions, it will heal itself. And unfortunately, we are being bombarded with multiple um, illnesses, and, uh, uh, poisons, and toxins, and things like that. And it's all been weaponized against us from our water to our food to. Um, every single uh, energetic environment now with the Wi-Fi and EMF and all of these things are, are, are working against us, but homeopathy is kind of bringing us back to centre. And what I wanted to ask you is essentially what you're saying is homeopathy also it, it clears ancestral trauma. Is it, Can we say that, that that's what it's working on, on a resonance of ancestral trauma as well? So if I gave you one example, so my husband, Matt, he won't mind me sharing this. He told me I can to my Instagram people, but um, he took the remedy Cifilinum, which is a very deep acting homeopathic remedy. So it's called one of our miasmatic remedies, big generational inheritance. Now going, if you look at the syphilitic miasm on its own, you see in the family history, a lot of rheumatoid arthritis, you see a lot of self-destruction, alcoholism, a lot of heavy trauma, diabetes, Matt's Aboriginal. So you really see it. And where the syphilitic miasm comes from is the original disease was syphilis that was spreading around the world. Now, what happens then is we cure the syphilis with drugs. So the person is cured, but when they go to have a baby, their energy, their vital force was still completely off because you've not really gotten to the root of that destructive syphilis, you know, that was so, I mean, it was rampant around the world. There were syphilitic hospitals everywhere to treat people, people dying, and it was so destructive. Now, you know, like King Henry VIII, he went totally crazy. And so here he is with his like leg ulcer, which is very syphilitic, killing his wives. They got really, really weird. And so in that, you know, the resonance of what has come down those lines is you really see in the trauma, the flare up of the rheumatoid arthritis, all of these very classic things, the addiction, a lot of suicide in the family, a lot of uh, depression, all of that also can be very spiritually connected. Um, so it's every remedy has duality. Some have like amazing uh, good points about it, creativity, all that. Anyway, with Matt, uh, and you also see with the syphilitic miasm, a strong affinity for the heart, heart attacks because syphilis, the disease destroyed the valves of the heart. Now we have a lot of people these days, I mean, and this was even before the COVID era, uh, who a lot of people do die early from heart attacks. Um, and we should be looking around and asking why, like what is going on with the energy of our hearts? Now, when I gave Matthew the remedy syphilinum, I did this only a couple of weeks ago and I gave it to him in the Fibonacci home accord. Now, what that means is with Fibonacci, we have the spiral, God's divine blueprint in nature, all mathematics going along with the homeopathic potencies, how much you uh, sort of energize it, I guess you'll say, dilute it and succuss it makes it, you know, a certain strength. Now, when you combine all of the Fibonacci uh, potencies, you sort of make it a super remedy, really powerful. Now, when Matt took that, um, it was just this emotional purge almost immediately. And when we're talking about generational trauma, what actually happened for him is um, his, yeah, Fibonacci there, uh, Matt's granddad uh, went to work one day and Matt's dad worked with him. So they both worked in the mines. So Matt's dad has gotten to work and he's seen at the front, you know, everyone's crowded around. What are they all standing at? And he goes up there and it's like, oh, my God, his dad is having a heart attack on the floor in front of him. So he's only 
21 years old and he's witnessing his dad have a heart attack in front of him, gets revived, and then he uh, ends up having a subsequent heart attack and dying. So the pain and the trauma that Matt's dad had from that point forward, it was immense. And pretty much how he reacted to that was just shut his heart down a little bit and just like, his fear was not actually that he would lose someone again. The fear was that somebody like Matthew, who was born two years later, would love him so much and one day he would die and not be there. So for him, it manifested as I never want to leave you without me. So you can't fall too in love with me. I can't get too attached to you as a father because what if I die too? And when Matt took this remedy, it is like the weight of that grief came pouring up out of him. And now my husband is not an overly emotional person. I mean, he's in touch with his emotions. Never have I seen like this level. And like he's sort of, he's laughing and crying at the same time because it was like this weight off his shoulders because he's saying to me, even though that was his dad. So what his dad did was sort of distance himself from Matt. He worked, his dad ended up working away from the family. So wasn't really there while he was growing up, always gave them money. And now as an adult, you know, all the family's still together, but he did. He definitely kept a distance to protect everybody. Then in recent years, you know, my sister asked Matt and I to be godparents for her daughter. And here is Matt like taking it so seriously. He's like, oh my God, but well, so what does that mean if Ash dies? Like, are we going to be looking after her? And he's like really overthinking. I'm like, what's the matter with you? I said, it's just a nice gesture to relax. And when he's taken this remedy, he is so scared that at some point, you know, she's going to really love him and he's not going to be there. And the day after he'd taken this remedy, we went over to my sister's house and her kids were all over him in a way that you had never seen. I'm like, my mum mentioned it, like, what is with the kids today? They're like, Matt, Matt, because Matt's like this big, strong. I mean, he's not someone that they, yeah, yeah. They were drawn to him. They felt the love from him because he said to me, he's like, you know, I actually do love them. I just not let myself love them because I don't want them to love me. And I thought, these are the sorts of subconscious things that we as humans carry our whole life. And that really, that didn't really have anything to do with Matt. It was an inherited tendency. And here is homeopathy purging it out and it allows people to actually recalibrate their spirit and their heart and actually just live in this world and embrace it. So, yeah. So incredible, Melissa. I'm I'm feeling emotional as you're talking about this because it just feels as though um, we're we're constantly searching for these other alternative methods for healing and I, I feel as though this is ticking the boxes on body, mind, spirit and uh, it's, it's, it's just encompassing all of it. It's encompassing this ancestral stuff the the various lineages everything seems to be frequency i've had um a guy who talks about tuning forks they've got a tuning fork um business and about frequency and he was explaining david hulse was explaining that it occurs in the energetics first in the etheric and then it manifests in the physical and he says it's about nine months so when it's out in the etheric and you fix the frequency there, it takes about nine months to, to manifest kind of like the same length of time as it um, takes for a human to be born. So this is the syphilinum. I've got this uh, as one of my remedies in the Fibonacci uh, home accords. Can you explain about the Fibonacci home accords briefly? Um, this was just from a personal thing. It's not in the kit. I'm just going to explain that to you all. So we'll talk about We'll talk about the Fibonacci uh, home accords, how you came up with it or how you decided to use it in your own practice. And then we'll talk about the kit and how everyone can get one. So the Fibonacci home accords, the Fibonacci series, the man who actually said, hey, I think I'm onto something, let's create this. He's actually a cardiothoracic surgeon. So here he is operating on people's hearts his whole life, uh, comes into the power of homeopathy switches his career. So he's got an integrated practice, but he is the one. So his name's Dr. Joe Rosenwag. And so he had the pharmacy start to make them up. Now, the way that he practices is he starts on the lowest Fibonacci frequency, and then he has his patients go up and up and up and up like a ladder. Now, where 
myself and my colleague got into the home accords is finding that when you combine all of them into one bottle what you're really allowing is for the body to take the frequency that it needs in that moment up and down the spiral as that healing occurs now in our practice you know we're under a time crunch like i don't have time to make someone come back for 10 appointments mm -hmm. while i'm going to elevate and change your potency you know mm -hmm. Every just, couple of weeks, it's like, I've got to get you pregnant ASAP. So just um, showing everyone the spiral here. So are you talking about the, is it the, these numbers? So yeah, you start so with we two, go three, five. Exactly. Yeah, okay. three, five. And we put a combination of all of them right up until 233. So it's wow. 10 potencies together. And I can say, because say, for example, with Matthew, I gave him one dose of cephalinum 200C, a few years ago because I was like, oh, bud, you're syphilitic. Um, and that it didn't do anything that I perceived back then. Having said that, you know, sometimes it is a timing thing when people are ready to like really recalibrate things. But the home accord, you know, oh, it was it was just hilarious because sometimes he will help me dispense my kids. And he said, even though he's like, I read your testimonies, I know the work that you do and like everything people say about you. And he said, but it is a completely different thing to experience and see yourself, this uncontrollable reaction. Um, but yeah, so that is the the Fibonacci, the idea behind that. That's amazing. Well, you, you prescribed me, I mean, I don't mind sharing this. You prescribed me uh, carcinosin in the Fibonacci Home Accord and the cephalinum and funnily enough um so maybe if you briefly explain the miasms um i think there's about five is it five or six miasms uh yeah and so i was told that i'm a tubercular miasm however when i read about the carcinosin miasm i thought no that's me and my family and you know so it's very interesting um can you please just quickly explain about the miasms i mean people will learn this in the courses that you've got i'm, I'm sure so maybe go through that really quickly for sure so the different miasms that we have tubercular syphilitic the cancer miasm that's your carcinosin this is a big player for many people these days but when we look at your case very dominant and you do see um they are brilliant and they are perfectionist family history of cancer all of these things epstein Barr. uh then you've got serinum and another one is the metarinum which comes from gonorrhea which you know people in our day and age we don't realize how many of our grandparents and great grandparents had gonorrhea it was rampant. It was killing people. When Captain Cook came to Australia, he had syphilis and gonorrhea. Here it comes spreading all amongst Australia. So let's say with the tubercular miasm, which certainly a lot of those elements would also um, overlap. And so you can sort of say that the tubercular miasm is sort of like a mixed miasmatic remedy. There's sort of like a mix of the other ones in there. So you'll see definitely the carcinogenic aspects in there too. But say with your tuberculosis, it's that the ancestor has had TB, we've treated it with drugs, but it has not completely cured the lung susceptibility. Now, when that person has children, what do they contribute? An egg and a sperm, but it's really very energetic. They're energetic instructions for how to grow that baby. That's just the blueprint. So here it comes growing this baby and it's going to grow a baby with slightly off kilter respiratory system, that susceptibility is going to be there. So a lot of our kids with asthma, eczema, hay fever allergies, and again, this is in the carcinogenic one, the cancer miasm, but it's very strong in tubercular. So uh, that is really how this chronic disease theory works. Now, a lot of people are saying that we have a new one called the strep miasm, and that is, you know, the kids with pandas, mm -hmm. and it is the streptococcus. Kids are getting these infections, and they are manifesting with the symptoms of autism. And what it is is inflammation in the brain um, as a sort of an wow. autoimmune type response. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible mm -hmm. thing. I'm looking at my, so my ancestries, Middle Eastern, uh, um, we do have some Germanic and uh, sort of French uh, background as well, but mostly Middle East. Um, and then my daughter's father is Scottish, Irish ancestry, and they're all, you know, tubercular, 
you know, he had mm. asthma as a kid what? and he, he gets the eczema and he gets, you know, it's all, it all fits in with that sort of, there would have been a widespread TB thing going on in the his, in his family history. That's pretty fascinating for me. Um, so let's talk about this beautiful kit. I'm, is it okay if I read out? These are some of the contents on this um, wonderful kit. So I've got the 20 kit, the kit with 20 remedies in there. Um, so in the contents, you have this really um, very beautifully made um, little uh, very quick to look through things. I was showing um, I was showing my family this uh, introduction to homeopathy and then you've got how this kit is designed to be used, taking a dose. So I suppose once they've read how to take a dose and they're, they're using it on a regular basis, it's quite easy to uh, use it across the board. So the things that this particular kit, this 20 kit covers is influenza, fevers, conjunctivitis, ear infections, colds, teething, tonsillitis and pharyngitis, coughs, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea, abdominal pain, cramps and colic. Uh, so that, that covers menstrual cramps, yeah? Would that yeah. cover? Yeah, okay. Uh, bruises and blunt trauma, sprains, wounds, cuts and abrasions, burns, skin conditions, mental emo and emotional conditions, grief and anxiety. Someone asked me specifically about grief the other day if the kit covers that. And then you've got a 30 kit. I'm going to show everyone now your let me just get it up so um did you want to touch on anything in that little booklet that you've got in the kit i'm going to bring your um so I was website up going, i was going to say uh western a price foundation they also published an article with all of the statistics for how homeopathy fared in preventing infectious diseases and treating them in their hospitals and they were comparing the mortality rates of those 100 homeopathic hospitals how did their mortality compare for cholera, for Spanish flu, for all of these, the scarlet fever that came through? Now, they were using the same remedies back then 100 years ago in those hospitals that are in that kit. So your belladonna, Samuel Hahnemann was using belladonna to prevent scarlet fever. And the statistics that Western A. Price published shows homeopathy is so far superior. It's indisputable and um that they got a little blurb from the guy and he said um he was training to be a medical doctor you know but his job was delivering the medicine to people and throughout like uh this was spanish flu and as he's dropping them off he's just realizing oh my gosh everyone that i'm dropping the homeopathics to is living and everyone that i'm dropping the aspirin to is dying and so he went on to become a, a famous homeopath and so it's um yeah aspirin, really the, the invention of aspirin kind of wiped out homeopathy homeopathy because aspirin kind of was this it, it covered up the symptoms got rid of the pain or, or what have you and then you know whereas homeopathics kind of worked on over time like it did still work instantly and it cured the condition or it made the body cure the condition so for example i'm just looking at and i knew it see i have a very mild understanding of homeopathy I thought to myself so if someone's got a um let's say they drank too much I don't drink at all but I'm just saying let's say they've got a hangover I thought to myself Nux Vomica right so Nux Vomica would work on the liver is that correct so this yeah. is and then yeah. I went straight to the nausea and vomiting diarrhea we've got arsenicum album is that garlic or onion I can't remember arsenicum so that one's made from arsenic so oh, it that's is the, the homeopathy sorry yeah yeah and so when we're talking about like curing like if you were to drink plain arsenic what would it give you vomiting, vomiting. and diarrhea now when you make the energetic version of it and you have gastro or food poisoning and you have vomiting or diarrhea mm -hmm. you ingest it you heal and this is how the body wow. energetically realizes. so nux vomica and cocculus is is that I did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. And then I understand mm. that, for example, with hay fever, so something that makes you cry, like onions, would be the cure for hay fever, right? So exactly. you have weepy. Wow, it's just an incredible, beautiful, beautiful modality. And I'm going to show nature, and it's just we are potentizing, taking the frequency of nature to, you know, heal another bit of, you know, nature that is us. It's just the spirit of a plant to help heal the spirit of a human. It's like really God gave us all of it for this. our own good. 
I love this mm. so much. I know this is we're on the right track here. My audience, when I I just gave them, I just said, please stay tuned to my channel. You know, my channel is being shadow banned at the moment um, because I've got this coming up. And immediately, I had so many people responding to the post that I put about homeopathy, and they were like, "Yes, you know, homeopathy. I know it it works." And oh, I can't wait for this. Mm. Or they've been saying that they've been looking for courses on how to do this. So I'm going to share with everybody your website. So. If you go to Melissa's uh, website, so it is called, just bear with me because I hate Zoom. It kind of puts everything in the way, so I can't see. Remedy Collective. Um, so you can either look up melissacoops.com or rmdycollective.com and you have her beautiful website. Now, these are the kits. Now, we can pre-order the 30 kits. Uh, the one I have is the 20 kit. Let me have let me go to first of all, let me go to the shop uh so shop first aid kits. There we are. And we've also got so the courses. In those, ones, in those new ones, we've got the five blends. So it's worming and parasite blend, you've got the flu blend, the headache blend. Sometimes with homeopathics, we do combine the different homeopathic medicines. If anyone's ever seen, you know, the rescue remedy mm -hmm. in the health food store, or even we sell them in the grocery yeah. stores in Australia. Yeah, we that do. Is yeah. Mm. Ah, that works for my daughter. Ever since she was little, because she used to have meltdowns with the autism, mm. I would, um, she knew that the rescue remedy would help her. She would actually gravitate towards it. Isn't that amazing? Okay, mm. so sorry for cutting you off there. So this is the beautiful um, 30 kit and this has got the extras. Um, is it okay? So these are the extra remedies that are included in this kit. On top of what I already shared with the 20 kit, we've got a flu mm. blend, a parasite blend. How many of you have been asking me for parasitic uh, remedies, remedies for parasites. We know that this is a um, a massive uh, issue for all people, but however, allopathic medicine just doesn't touch it. It doesn't talk, talk about parasites. And the other thing is, as above, so below, we know that energetically, if there are energetic beings sort of parasiting off us, usually there's an infestation of some kind of parasites. Parasite blends, anxiety blend. How many of you have teenagers with who've suffered from anxiety in the last few years? It's really rampant. Uh, it is the way, you know, there's something going on there. Uh, cough blend, head cold blend, headache blend. This is wonderful. These are some of the the um, remedies that you've got in there. Arnica, which is a must-have. Uh, aconite, is that how you pronounce it? Aconite, yeah. Aconite, Arsenicum mm. album, Apis, Allium Sepa. I think Allium Sepa is the garlic or onion. Which one? Onion? Onion. Uh, onion. Belladonna, Bio <laughs> Brionia, Cocculus, Colosynthus, uh, Cantharus, is it? Or Santharus? Cantharus? Cantharus, uh, yep. Cantharus, Camomilia, Sepia, Ferrumphos, uh, Thuya, um, Gelesium. So a lot of people would know Thuya yeah, because Thuya. it's the most renowned uh, vaccine, ailments from vaccines. Yes. So if someone has Antiviral. more sense. Thuya is one of the biggest. It also causes warts to drop off, the number yes. one wart remedy. Mm. So it's antiviral, correct? Uh, Thuya mm -hmm. works for antiviral and candida and things like that. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Hepa, Solf, uh, oh, my gosh. I can go through all of them. Um, this has <laughs> got <laughs> it's an amazing kit. You've also got your, um, actually, we'll go back. We've got these. And with those two, yep. because they're so potent, when people use a drop of that, you are only going to use really one to two drops into a bottle of water because you are going to dispense in water. That frequency disperses. That is all you're going to need for that whole day. So say for me, in regards to the kits, this is potent. I mean, that's Fibonacci frequency in there. That's the combination. I've got three baby boys and I've only ever used homeopathy for them. And I've got my same kit. So depending on like how much you love using it. Okay. Some, some people have bought like two or three because they just love, like they are obsessed. They love to dose with everything, but really you are going to use that. And because homeopathic medicine doesn't expire, mm -hmm. you just want to keep it safe. You want to keep it away from a Wi-Fi router or a microwave, but other than that, you're good and it will last. They found the suitcases of the old homeopaths and it had all of the airtight sealed little homeopathic remedies. They used to go house to house yes. with a kit like that and they were still potent decades later. So this should last people, you know, you keep it safe, 
and it should last you. It's in a beautiful box, a beautiful uh, wooden box, and uh, it, it will be. It's some. It's like a keepsake. It'll be make brilliant Christmas presents. Uh, if you'd like to invest that, look, maybe you are thinking of a, a Christmas present for a family. So, like, instead of let's say buying uh, lots of little presents, the family can have this as a kit. It's so easy to use. The other thing that a lot of people are interested in is um, in the courses. I know I was uh, when I started. Fit, I felt like a past life was coming through and that I somehow knew a lot of stuff about homeopathy. I'm sure that happened to you too, Melissa, when you got introduced to it, you kind of started remembering maybe you were an alchemist or something in a past life. Um, But I love that you have, I thought I would have to go to university for like four years to study homeopathy, but you've got ones for just personal use. You've got a course here. So we've got the first course here, which is an online course. And this is for, this is for, um, for yeah, go for it. Tell me. Yeah. So that one's for individuals. So what I want to teach people is what it is and how to use it. And like how we were talking about, you know, my sister and that remedy and the recurrent UTIs, I want to teach people the patterns of these diseases so that if they ever have something going on in their life, they can recognize the pattern. Same too with their children. If they have got trauma, they've got something going on, you will be able to spot, you know, where is it? What sort of remedy am I looking at picking here? I've also got in there um, the homeopath who was originally my university lecturer. I then ended up hiring him after I went and studied. I was like, hey, do you want a job? Because I've got a whole lot of overflow ready for you. Um, And so he teaches with me. So we've got this course for individuals, which I would say, to be quite honest, it's transformative because you get to know yourself better. You get to heal your own spirit. And it's through learning about these patterns, about these traumas and how people transcend them that people are finding the right remedy for themselves and really elevating themselves. And it's like so many people in this day and age, they know the importance of doing this work. They're trying to do it for the sake of humanity because they know we've all got to come up. We've all got to heal this stuff. But for the people who are stuck and they just need that push, like the elevation energetically to get them on the right track, that's where they want to go to really like learn that and comprehend that. So we'll also do the homeopathic immunizations in that. So people are aware of how to prevent themselves and also how to detox. If you've taken the oral contraceptive pill, um, yes. any mainstream interventions that you've had, V's, anything, if you need to heal from that, even the Gardasil, um, the HPV one, a very popular one um, that a lot of people have. Yeah. Yeah, fertility issues now. So if you have teenagers, if you know anyone, it's like this knowledge is power. Now, our goal is ultimately to bring back these homeopathic hospitals, the outpatient clinics. Our business has been so successful that I do think that it's creating such a movement. And so, you know, they say, I can't fight big pharma, but we can build a medical model that people will prefer because people are over. They're over that. And what they need is the alternative and they're really coming for it. And then- the other course is our practitioner course. And I have from screen. all the okay, sure. Let me share screen I have for nurses. this. I have nurses enrolled in this, emergency nurses, midwives, um, pharmacists, medical professionals, and I'm teaching them, and not only them, uh, also naturopaths, kinesiologists. Um so yeah, many, that's many this healers. One. Yeah, yeah. Many healers in my and- audience are looking for Mm. an extra modality to add to their practice, Um, Mm. this would be a wonderful thing to add. This is in, look, I'm opening this in Australia. This is Australian dollars. Um, You do have a special offer for my audience members and a special Mm. code for them to use. So was this your your teacher? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. And... um, he started it all he had that instinct it seems that a lot of homeopaths even if they did study allopathic medicine and then they turned to homeopathy they seem to be going more on instinct and in a more intuitive sort of path for healing and they you know is that part of it as well do you feel that intuition is a major part of practicing it Um, when I am talking about it, say on Instagram is where I do most of my talking, people are just lighting up my inbox. And because it is like 
what I'm saying is familiar to them. And it's true. When I was reading those textbooks, it felt familiar. And I was like, oh my gosh, here you are. I'm back, you know, and this is, you know, just completely uh, where we're at in the world. It is so what is needed. Um, and I do, I do honestly think that it is the key. I think it's the key that a lot of people have missed. It's re- resonating with so many. I love this. I just think this is part of that new earth thing. I know that sounds like a real uh, twee kind of comment yeah. now and everybody's using it and it's a bit of a lame, you know, spiritual masturbation. I'm sorry to say that. It's almost <laughs> a bit like it, it is real, it's like true. that whole we are because what we're doing is it's it's like the pendulum has to swing, right, and it's swung, it's swinging really far this way, and people want it to go, but want to go back. They want to go back to what worked and rediscover themselves. This is why I love this. Um, so tell us about the people that are my viewers. What how, what are you offering for them? Um, I think we've got a special code that your team has set up. Yeah, and so um, they- tell me. Yeah. So they get 10% off if they want to do the course and get our kit, they get a, I mean, that's already, if you buy it as a combo, it's $200 off that original kit anyway, if you want to do the course and that, but for your followers, they get an extra 10% off. Wow. Um, You're our only big Aussie affiliate other than Dale. (laughs) Dale was very influential, FYI. Um, He's got a lot of, and it's because people understand, they understand vibration. And here is the thing, right? So we're talking about health and yes, the physical manifestation. But if you are talking about your vibration and you're talking about even generating wealth, a good relationship, this is completely homeopathic. And with my, even like, yeah, all of the opportunities that people want, it's all energy and it's all in the field. And when people clear that up and it's like, whoa, right, crap, I remember my worth now. And it just comes in for them like the next day. Um, remarkable. I could tell us on that, but I won't. But um, that amazing. is what people really want. They want freedom. Um, so, yeah, I would do the the course and get that 30 kit bundle um that's sort of the best thing to do but if you had any practitioners who want to practice homeopathy they want to offer it um Peter and I are teaching that and we're going to do another round of it. So we just took 60 people through that um, and they're about to graduate. And once you graduate then too, you also have access to the online homeopathic pharmacies. So there are a couple of pharmacies in Australia. So you can order all of the vaccine isodes, all the things to detox, because a lot of them aren't available to the general public. They're practitioner only. So we get that set up by an account. So that's the practitioner one. But that's a practitioner and one. you don't know, get. Yeah, fertility protocol so yes and it's like at the moment you know how we're talking about that pendulum swimming yeah. swinging we are in such a hole at the moment in regards to fertility it is like wow something has to change it cannot go on like this something yeah. has to change and I do think this is definitely you know the awakening here we go spiritual wanking again but <laughs> it is true that people are realizing we are on the brink of extinction and I have been working in fertility the last five, six years and it has dropped off a cliff after the last couple of years. And so people need this help. And it's like even all of the rounds of IVF are not cutting it. It is something else in the body that needs to be cleared. And so that's what we're teaching our practitioners here Um, and we get great success in detoxing and healing and all of that. So Yes, Amazing. It's remarkable. And, and so you've seen some uh, fertility breakthroughs. You've seen that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, people do not come to the homeopath usually unless it is a absolute last resort. So people yeah. come to me when they've done, I'm not actually kidding you, 20 rounds of IVF. Whoa. And then the IVF clinic says your body is not actually releasing eggs anymore. It is physically impossible for us to run another round. I'm sorry. There's no way that you're going to conceive a baby. And as a mother, like I'm talking about one couple in particular right now, she just refused to give up. So she gets online and she's Googling, you know, natural ways to ovulate. Like, how can I help it? Happens to find an article on homeopathy. Happens to find my fertility protocol. Happens to live in a suburb, a couple of suburbs over from me. I wasn't taking new patients and she's like, no, seriously, please, I need to see you. And she was pregnant within four months. And it's things like this. When you think 
She wouldn't have a baby. That baby wouldn't be born if she didn't never give up and just look and persist and have faith that there was a way for her to have it. And I think, um, oh, gosh, I I wish people knew about homeopathy before doing 20 rounds of IVF and exhausting themselves and their body, but that's not the world we live in yet. But this is why I'm so passionate about teaching people because they are this ripple effect because once people get a hold of it and once they see it for themselves and it transforms their life, I mean, they can't shut up about it. It's like the best secret, you know, ever. They're telling their friends, oh, you got to try this. And it's really quickly disseminated. So when the time comes and we are opening these outpatient clinics, we already have like an army of people who are like, I will volunteer for that because I want this world to get healthier. I want people's spirits to heal I want it to be better. So this mm. is brilliant. And guys, I'm uh, I'm going to write a dowsing course, and I think that homeopathy and dowsing really helps because that's kind of like for your own personal use. So as you're using it, you could find the exact remedy for. So maybe you've got a selection of three. Which one would be the best one? You could douse on it and, and work that out. So I just wanted to let you know that you can. Uh, test remedies in that way with muscle testing or dowsing um, dowsing work as well so this is because it's all vibration and um, yeah I just I just think this is so brilliant we want an army of people who are now trained up in these modalities no more wishy-washy kind of healing we we, you know a lot of us go to these healers um, and I'm not poo-pooing other remedies okay but sometimes you can be working and working and working and slugging away at something chipping away at an issue that you may have had for 30 years um and then when you like look at my daughter I mean I know it's eight years like you know most kids are toilet trained by the age of two okay eight years of changing diapers eight years of my daughter not feeling she actually said to me I can't feel it and overnight by the second dose it was cured, all right? That particular issue with her cognition was cured with homeopathics. And I checked that because she was getting craniosacral therapy from the homeopath, um, the the osteopath homeopath. And I asked her, is it the craniosacral therapy that helped her or is it the homeopathics? And she shook her head and she said, it's the homeopathic remedy. She said 100%. She said, and when it's done its job, you don't need it anymore. So she said, yeah, we're moving on a- to the next, yeah, we're moving on to the next remedy. So we're, it's layers of things that we're clearing for my daughter. And I've got a couple of um, non-verbal autistic children, seven years old, so beautiful. And it's the DTAP actually for them. You know, a lot of people would say the MMR is usually the bigger assault, but um, in this case, it was the DTAP detoxing. And yep. the mother was like, well, speaking at seven and uh, the grandmother even messaged me and said, the change in my son is unbelievable. And it is exposing the body to that energetic frequency and allowing it to mount up a response. Um, I'm going to tell you because we're on the next because now we're not doing the MMR detox we're doing the next one and I'm going to cry my daughter um, yesterday morning um, sang a song like word for word she remembered the words my daughter has really bad memory and she can't remember people's names she can't ever remember the words for songs and just out of the blue in front of me and her father she said these really like complex words and she remembered all the whole song and um we just looked at each other and went what the hell and these are the little things that start to come through as the body heals itself and detoxes and clears what the damage of these vaccines have done speaking of vaccines i want to touch on this before we wrap up um for those who've had um the jab the c jab we can't say the word Um, and who have remorse for taking it and were forced to take it perhaps with their work, is there uh, a way to detox from this? Yeah, and they have been made up, the isopathic versions of each one. So you need to know the brand of the V that you had and we take that in the same way. And what I'm seeing with my clients 
is the healing. Since they had it, they are getting the healing response to the physical symptoms. In the women, it's often reflected in the menstrual cycle. Surprisingly, a lot is discharged through that. Uh, For the men, different things, a flu, returns of things like flu. And we know that the flu actually is a detox response of the body to use the mucus to get it out. So that's very common too. But yes, absolutely. What about those who have experienced shedding symptoms uh, from people who are jabbed? that didn't take then, it, what mm, about that? I would take it too. And I would also discern whether the person has an issue from the actual virus um, because people who have had, and whatever it seems to have been, I don't mind You know what people want to call it, how they want to classify it, but people have had a flu-like illness, lost taste and lost smell, and their body has been left in an inflamed state. So things like psoriasis, eczema, they've been left really amped up. It's using that uh, homeopathic nose ode clears that and one more thing uh we can use homeopathics as like a natural kind of uh preventative for viral conditions is that correct and this is where dr isaac golden so this was dale holmes's homeopath when he was a little boy Mm. dr isaac Golden has his phd in homeoprophylaxis so prophylaxis using homeopathy as a prophylactic against disease. So he was taking the COVID nose. I'm pretty sure Isaac never got it because you're already exposing your body to the frequency. When it comes into contact with the actual matter, the body goes, oh, I recognize that, don't need it. In in essence, you know, it's acting like at that level of immunity that we aimed for with the Vs. So yeah, that people can use it. So a lot of the remedies are the, in the kit, like let's say Samuel Hahnman, when scarlet fever was going around, it was belladonna. He had everyone in the local community using belladonna and they were literally coming to the homeopaths houses and lining up around the block to get their quick little dose, their micro doses with homeopathy. They go so far. And because of that, there's not a lot of money to be made on them because they're nano doses, because they can be dispersed and dispensed in water. But uh, in Cuba, they used homeoprophylaxis on millions of people in 2007 because there was a vaccine shortage for leptospirosis. And on a desperate whim, the government said, all right, fine, give this 7 million people the homeopathic version, give that 8 million people the vaccine and let's just hope for the best. What do you think happened in that 7 million people? And you can look and you can read this in PubMed beyond. And because it was so successful, homeopathic uh, prophylaxis has continued in Cuba to this day. They use it for dengue fever, hepatitis. They rolled it out in nursing homes for COVID, but they are not under the thumb of pharma overlords like the Western world. So they get away with it. Wow. That is just brilliant. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on to my show and sharing this with the audience. And um, if one last thing, if anyone wants a one-on-one session, what do you have? Because I know people are going to ask and you told me that you're not seeing patients privately, but you would see me as a special request. However, what do you say to people? I'm going back to your website. Where do they go to find Uh, the practitioners to help them for what they need personally. Yep, consultations and you have the option of two brilliant homeopaths. So Peter and Kim, both very experienced, that's me. And then, um, you know, Kim really specialises postpartum, women, children, and then Peter is just a jack of all trades, complex cases, a lot of the ones, you know, with the real deeper rooted um things he's got 35 years experience and he's brilliant studied a lot of alchemy um Wonderful. so yeah those two people would be my recommendation please let them know that you know you came through me just so that they can give this information back to melissa so she knows that people are coming through um to get these consultations um through me i don't get a kickback for that but just do, just do it so that melissa knows about melissa knows where the audience is coming from fertility protocol can i just ask about that there might be some people out there who are trying to get pregnant and so if they have taken the pill if they've had gardasil if they have shut down their reproductive system we need to re-energize it so i have a lot of women who do not have regular menstrual cycles sometimes they're not releasing eggs 
I can give you folliculinum, I can give you Thuya, and I can pretty much guarantee you the next month you're going to say to me, oh my God, there is so much of that egg white mucus. And as women, as women get older, we don't really mount that appropriate amount of estrogen to get that really fertile mucus and the sperm need that to swim. So it can be something that simple that is stopping people from conceiving. And because the medical model cannot help you with that, they have to send you to IVF. So many times it's simple to fix. Other times it's a bit more deeper rooted unblocking that we need to do, but we can improve sperm health and we can definitely get women more fertile. So that's amazing. I have, uh, could, could, um, if somebody is uh, in their forties, could they become like they're, and they're, you know, they've got regular periods or what what have you, and they're trying, they want to get pregnant. Would this tip them over the edge into getting fertile you know enough to to be able to conceive yeah so the oldest patient that I've worked with was 44 and she conceived and she still had regular periods but it was just about amping it up um and so yes absolutely into their 40s they've still periods I'm not going to have another baby just letting you know (laughs) just asking for other people out there okay this is brilliant thank you so much Melissa so in the description box below and in the pinned comment of this video I will be putting the discount code for you for you to purchase either the courses or the kits or and with the kit when you do the course you will get a kit so um, please uh, look for that code put that in uh, when you go to the checkout and uh, it will appear as their own currency when they're, what is the website showing as? It, I think, does convert to whatever country they're in. We sort of have literally half our sales are in the US, half are in Australia and the rest is like a little bit scattered. Um, But yeah, it should go to your currency. And then so with the 10% off, you'll get 10% off anything that has a product in it. So that's if you get that course with the kit, you get 10% off the whole thing. If you just buy a kit on its own, 10% off. So, but say it's only the practitioner's course or that other course, if you buy them alone, then they don't get a discount, but yes. Okay. I understand. All right, guys. So I hope you listen. If you've made it this far, uh, please uh, put in the emoji in your comment, write a comment and put a little green heart. I want to see a green heart if you've made it this far. So I know that you've gone right to the end and you've listened to what we have to say. Melissa, any last words before we say goodbye? Oh, no, thank you so much. I have followed your channel for a long time. I joke with Jack Dale that, like, I'm his OG follower. I'm like, <laughs> I found you when you had no followers and I found you when you you were midway rising. So I jumped on then, but no, <laughs> have adored you this whole time. So thank you so much for having me on. And that's another beautiful synchronicity that we both know, Dale, and that's wonderful. I'm so glad to call him a friend. See you later, Melissa. Thank you so much for this beautiful video. Please, um, Get on board, guys. Homeopathy is the way to go. This is how we create a new earth. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.